little girl growing up, I never dreamed about ever being a country singer. I guess that was just too big of a dream for a little girl that didn't have much, didn't have hardly anything. Singing about her humble roots is what helped make Loretta a legend. I did go to bed hungry, and um, I guess I just knew I was hungry. I didn't know we were poor. In her final years, Loretta endured many health battles. She suffered a major stroke in 2017 and a broken hip in 2018. But the following year, in 2019, she had recovered enough to attend an all-star birthday celebration in her honor. I feel great. They say to have her hair than Liz Blouse. From Carrie Underwood to Dolly, Reba, and Pink, Loretta was admired by all. A trailblazer and considered country music royalty, she always credited her work ethic for helping make her a star. I think I work probably harder than anybody in the business. I worked harder than all of them, to tell you the truth. She was still making music well after she turned 80. You told me that you had found someone new. Oh, I feel great. And I love to get out there and sing, and, and the people sing as loud as I do when I'm, they're in there. And they're from, I have people from 10 years old to 80. He shovel coal to make a poor man's dollar. Loretta's life story was made into the movie Coal Miner's Daughter. In 1981, Sissy Spacek won the Best Actress Oscar for playing Loretta, even though she wasn't that familiar with her music when she got the role. She went down and she bought all my tapes. At that, at that time, it was eight-track tapes. And she learned all the songs. And she said uh, she never listened to country music. She always listened to rock and roll. Miranda Lambert and Cheryl Crow also shot a coal miner's daughter music video with Loretta at her Tennessee mansion. Never thought of ever leaving, but you're holler. When this one come along, I said, now they can't talk about me because look how country she is. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'll fill those shoes anytime. I'll try to. <laughs> She's great, isn't she? I'm about as old fashioned as I can be. The four time Grammy winner had six children. Early in her career, the working mom struggled balancing home life and career, sometimes leaving them behind when she went on tour. I've given up a lot, but I've given a lot too, and people have given a lot to me. I've raised my head and set myself. But the country girl never forgot where she came from and never wanted to stop creating the music she loved. I don't even know what retirement means. I want to die with a pencil in my hand writing a hit song. A honky tonk song. <laughs> Set the memories of the coal daughter. We remember a country music legend celebrating Loretta Lynn. Lynn's family revealing she died at the age of 90 at her ranch in Tennessee, the daughter of a Kentucky coal miner. It was that song that helped define a career. Loretta Lynn was a trailblazer. If you're out on me, you're looking at country. If Singing about equality for women and the double standards. You can't have a male friend when you're a has-been or a woman you're rated at. In plain language. You say you're gonna take it. Oh, but I don't think you can. Cause you ain't woman enough to take my man. Writing her own songs, speaking her own mind. A liquor and love, they just don't mix these ball or me behind. And don't come home but drink up with love on your mind. Born in Kentucky, one of eight children, she said she was born singing. Me and my little first cousin sang all the time. And when we were little, Daddy would come out on the porch and tell us to shut her big mouth. People all over the holler can hear you, he'd say. And I said, Daddy, who cares? They're all our cousins. <laughs> the daughter of a coal miner. Yeah, I'm proud to be a coal miner's daughter. I remember when the well had the water. The world would die. And I would sleep because we were tall. I never thought of ever leaving. 
1970 song, Coal Miner's Daughter, becoming the title of her book in a movie. Sissy Spacek playing Lynn. Miss Sissy Spacek. Spacek winning an Oscar. And thank you, Loretta Lynn. I want to thank Loretta Lynn. Writing more than 160 songs, more than 60 albums, winning so many Grammys. The nation's highest civilian honor, the Presidential Medal of Freedom in 2013. I would write about my life and what was going on around me right at the time and uh, how I was feeling and how some of the other girls were feeling out there. So I, I tried to write for us all, you know. Tonight, Loretta Lynn in her own words on what led to her success. Treat everybody like you'd like to be treated. And that way you won't have to stop and look back and say, hey, you know, the reason I'm not doing so good, I didn't do people right. And I think if you feel this way and never hurt anybody, I think you'll get along all right. Except the memories of the coal miner's daughter. Finally tonight here, the coal miner's daughter in her own words. She was asked how she wanted people to look back at her life, her music, Loretta Lynn, on how she wanted to be remembered. Loretta Lynn was asked how she would like to be remembered, and she said, as a good person that never hurt nobody. Then asked if she had any regrets, she said, no, if I had to do it over, I would go the same route again. Well, we are celebrating a country music legend tonight. A lot of people playing a little Loretta Lynn today. She was a beloved country music star with a career spanning more than six decades, but she never forgot her Eastern Kentucky roots. Loretta Lynn died at 90 years old last week. So tonight, we're honoring the local coal miner, coal miner rather, daughter, finding her special moments in Louisville, including the premiere of her Oscar-winning film. WHAS 11 editor Joe Federley and Shay McAllister take us back in this week's WHAS 11 Vault. But I like to sing in Kentucky, and everybody, you know, a lot of people I know here, so it's kind of like coming home. Even though she became a world-renowned star, Loretta Lynn never forgot about her home state of Kentucky, as seen here at the Louisville Gardens in September of 1980. You could tell by looking at her customized bus, she still embraced being a coal miner's daughter. WHAS 11's Dave Creek got an exclusive sit-down interview with her on board. She talked about her thoughts on why her biography, having just been turned into a film released earlier this year, was so successful. Well, I think the reason that uh, it did this is because it's such a good movie. And it was not just country music, you know. that That's really more or less a love story than anything to do with country music. Did you expect that kind of popularity? Yes, I sure did. Almost 20 years later, she was still more popular than ever when an estimated 300,000 people gathered to see her serve as the Grand Marshal of the Derby Festival Pegasus Parade. About the best thing I've ever done, yes. We're in Kentucky, ain't we? <laughs> the year was 1999 and everyone was happy to see the queen of country music back home in Kentucky. It was a day thousands remember, but older Kentuckians will remember another huge event that was a major moment in her life. Live from Louisville, a Hollywood motion picture premiere. March of 1980, Loretta chose the old Showcase Cinemas, now the Costco on Bardstown Road, to debut the film based on her life. WHAS 11's nightly magazine show, Louisville Tonight, broadcast the event live. Hi, I'm Tom Van Howe. And I'm Angie Humphrey. Welcome to Louisville Tonight. Governor John Y. Brown Jr. and his wife, former Miss America Phyllis Knight, were instrumental in making it all happen. How many months are you? I'm due in the, at the end of April. When are you due? I'm due uh, about June 28th. <laughs> we just met um, Loretta, and uh, she's real excited about this, too. And she has six children, and she's the teeniest little thing. So I know there's hope for us, Ange. It's encouraging, isn't it, that you can get skinny again? That's right. This will be the first time you've gotten to see yourself in the movie, right? Yes. How old are you, Elizabeth? Eight. I'll be nine next month. Even WHAS legend Wayne Perkey was one of the honored guests. Heard good things about it. Yeah, really good things. So we're, I think it's the whole thing is an extremely exciting event. Talk. That is Coyote Calhoun. Hi. We have some Derby Roses we're going to be giving Loretta later on this evening. Star Sissy Spacek, who would get the Oscar for her portrayal of the Kentucky legend, was nervous, hopeful Loretta would approve of her performance. Was that spooky, a funny feeling? Yeah, it really was. It, it, 
more so after we after I got to know Loretta because I cared so much what she thought. The highlight of the evening was when Loretta arrived. I think I started singing when I was around 24 years old. Everybody that I talked to wanted to write my life story. Well, I hadn't even lived yet. Of course, I'm just starting now. But uh, I finally got tired of hearing it, and I finally let the fellow that had spent two years down in the part of the country I'm from help me write the book. And after the book was written, I said, this is going to be a movie. Of course, my manager kind of laughed at me, but now he's a laughing uh, I want a different way. It was a cold but exciting night that now warms our hearts as we are reminded of why the world fell in love with the girl from Butcher Hollow. I'm about as old fashioned as I can be, so I hope you're liking what you see. Country music has lost a true icon. Today, CMT remembers Loretta Lynn. For the next half hour, we'll celebrate one of the most unique music talents ever, the incredible Loretta Lynn. We have vintage performances, we'll hear from the country stars who idolized her, and much more. Right now we have this look at the life of a true one of a kind, Loretta Lynn. When I was born to call miner's daughter. As incredible as Loretta Lynn's rags to riches story was, it was her ability to write and sing about it that made her a country music icon and a trailblazer for every female artist who followed in her footsteps. If you're looking at me, you're looking at country. She was the second of eight children who lived in a one-room log cabin deep in the hills of eastern Kentucky. We didn't really know how poor we was, and I think everybody was like that. And so you really don't know it till you go to bed hungry. At age 13, Loretta met Mooney Doolittle Lynn, who walked her home from a pie supper. Uh, there wasn't much said about it, except you're never to see that boy again. He's too old and he's too wild. <laughs> and we got married one month later. I didn't even know what marrying was. She quickly found out. By the time she was 18, Loretta had four children of her own and was living far from home in the Pacific Northwest. Doolittle would often disappear for days at a time, even weeks. There has been three or four times I would have left him because uh, I had a reason to. But how can you go 3,000 miles with four kids and no money? Doolittle was certainly not husband of the year material, but he proved to be a pretty good judge of talent. And he said, Loretta, I listen to the girl singers in the car all the time. You're a better singer than they are. He was right. Loretta conquered extreme stage fright and began playing honky tonks. She eventually recorded four songs in a Los Angeles studio, and by 1960... Well, the first time I met him was in Manhattan, New York, and uh, we worked together. And um, I was telling him I was getting ready to go, go in and do an album by myself. He said, well, could I go in and produce it? And I said, why not? Just to meet Loretta Lynn is an honor, let alone work with her. For her to come out and just show me all these songs she'd written that were so brilliant that she never recorded, I couldn't wait to get in the studio. Let's get in there. These are, these are great. She had piles and piles of songs she's written over the years, and I said, let's, I wanted to do them all, you know? <laughs> the result was Van Leer Rose, an album that let Loretta do what she does best. It was even more country than my first album, I think. I didn't want to overthink it, you know? I didn't want to push and try to perfect it. She sounds brilliant right off the bat. Her voice is gorgeous, just gorgeous voice she has. Loretta Lynn. Van Leer Rose went on to win the Grammy in 2005 for Best Country Album. It was Loretta's first since she and Conway 21 for After the Fire is Gone back in 1971. We never dreamed we'd get a Grammy, did we? No, ma'am. We just figured we'd go out and do a little album and sing a little bit, forget it, and it's been a hit. And we're happy. <laughs> yes, we are. Loretta and Jack won a second Grammy for Best Country Collaboration. A classic performance of Loretta's biggest hit is coming up. Stay with us as CMT remembers Loretta Lynn. Country music has lost one of its true legends, Loretta Lynn. Today, fans all over the world are listening to their favorite Loretta tracks, and some are discovering her music for the first time online. There's one song in particular that is quintessential Loretta. We're leaving you with a classic performance of her signature song, Coal Mine. Hello YouTube. It is with a sad heart that we report of country legend Loretta Lynn's passing. Loretta Lynn was born April 14, 1932, and passed away October 4, 2022. She was an American singer-songwriter. 
In a career which spanned six decades in country music, Lynn released multiple gold albums. Lynn received many awards and other accolades for her groundbreaking role in country music, including awards from both the Country Music Association and Academy of Country Music as a duet partner and an individual artist. She was nominated 18 times for a Grammy Award and won three times. Hey, this is what this business is all about, ain't it? Uh, this is one of it. I'd like to say that the main thing about country music is I love to sing it, and there's a lot of people love to hear country music. Well, you leave me at home to keep a teepee clean. A six pound pussy to break and wean. Well, your squaw is on the war path tonight. As of 2022, Lynn was the most awarded female country recording artist and the only female ACM artist of the decade, 1970s. Lynn scored 24 number one hit singles and 11 number one albums. She ended 57 years of touring on the road after she suffered a stroke in 2017 and then broke her hip in 2018. Lynn was born Loretta Webb in Butcher Hollow, Kentucky, on April 14, 1932. She was the eldest daughter and second child born to Clara Marie Clary and Melvin Theodore Ted Webb. Ted was a coal miner and subsistence farmer. Lynn and her siblings are of partial Cherokee descent. She was named after the film star Loretta Young. On January 10, 1948, 15-year-old Loretta Webb married Oliver Veneta Doolittle Lynn, better known as Doolittle, Do, or Mooney. They had met only a month earlier. The Lynns left Kentucky and moved to the logging community of Custer, Washington, when Loretta was seven months pregnant with the first of their six children. In 1953, Doolittle bought her a $17 harmony guitar she taught herself to play the instrument, and over the following three years, she worked to improve her guitar playing. With Doolittle's encouragement, she started her own band, Loretta and the Trailblazers, with her brother Jay Lee playing lead guitar. She often appeared at Bob's Tavern in Blaine, Washington, and the Delta Grange Hall in Custer, Washington, with the Penn Brothers Band and the Westerners. She cut her first record, I'm a Honky Tonk Girl, in February 1960. Lynn released her first DECA single, Success, in 1962, and it went straight to number six. We used to go out walking hand in hand. You told me all the big things you had planned. Beginning a string of top ten singles that would run throughout the 1970s. Lynn's music began to regularly hit the top 10 after 1964 with songs such as Before I'm Over You, which peaked at number 4, followed by Wine, Women and Song, which peaked at number 3. In late 1964, she recorded a duet album with Ernest Tubb. In 1965, her solo career continued with three major hits, Happy Birthday, Blue Kentucky Girl, and The Home You're Tearing Down. Lynn's label issued two albums that year, Songs From My Heart and Blue Kentucky Girl. Lynn's first self-penned song to crack the top 10, 1966's Dear Uncle Sam, was among the first recordings to recount the human costs of the Vietnam War. Her 1966 hit You Ain't Woman Enough, To Take My Man, made Lynn the first country female recording artist to write a number one hit. Singing You Ain't Woman Enough, Take My Man, here's Miss Loretta Lynn. The song would later be parroted by Dwayne The Rock Johnson in the film Be Cool. Oh, but I don't think you can Cause you ain't woman enough to take my man no. And don't come home but drink up with love on your mind In 1967, Lynn reached number one with Don't Come Home A Drinkin' with Lovin' On Your Mind which became one of the first albums by a female country artist to reach sales of 500,000 copies. Lynn's next album, Fist City, was released in 1968. The title track became Lynn's second number one hit as a single earlier that year, and the other single from the album, What Kind of a Girl, Do You Think I Am, peaked within the top 10. In 1968, her next studio album, Your Squaw Is On The Warpath, spawned two top five country hits, including the title track and You've Just Stepped In, from Stepping Out On Me. 
In 1969, her next single, Woman of the World, Leave My World Alone, was Lynn's third chart topper, followed by a subsequent top 10, To Make a Man, Feel Like a Man. Her song You Ain't Woman Enough, To Take My Man, was an instant hit and became one of Lynn's all-time most popular. Her career continued to be successful into the 1970s, especially following the success of her autobiographical hit Coal Miner's Daughter, which peaked at number one on the Billboard Country chart in 1970. When I was born to Coal Miner's Daughter In a cabin on a hill but you holler the song Coal Miner's Daughter later served as the impetus for the best-selling autobiography, 1976, and the Oscar-winning biopic, both of which share the song's title. In 1973, Rated X peaked at number one on the Billboard Country Chart and was considered one of Lynn's most controversial hits. The following year, her next single, Love is the Foundation, also became a number one country hit from her album of the same name. The second and last single from that album, Hey Loretta, became a top five hit. Lynn continued to reach the top 10 until the end of the decade, including 1975's The Pill, one of the first songs to discuss birth control. Many of Lynn's songs were autobiographical, and as a songwriter, Lynn felt no topic was off limits, as long as it was relatable to women. In 1976, she released her autobiography, Coal Miner's Daughter, with the help of writer George Vexy. It became a no. One bestseller, making Lynn the first country music artist to make the New York Times bestseller list. In 1971, Lynn began a professional partnership with Conway Twitty. As a duo, Lynn and Twitty had five consecutive number one hits between 1971 and 1975. Because of her dominant hold on the 1970s, Lynn was named the Artist of the Decade by the Academy of Country Music. She is the only woman to win this honor. On March 5, 1980, the film Coal Miner's Daughter debuted in Nashville and soon became the number one box office hit in the United States. The film starred Sissy Spacek as Loretta and Tommy Lee Jones as her husband, Doolittle Mooney Lynn. The film received seven Academy Award nominations, winning the Best Actress Oscar for Spacek, a Gold Album for the Soundtrack Album, a Grammy nomination for Spacek. From 1963 until 2021 she released 46 studio albums. From 1962 until 1979 her singles would mostly make the top 10 on the country charts. She released a total of 86 singles. Five of them made the top 20 during the 1980s, even after the onslaught of the new country which saw the old-style country artists start to fade on the charts. These included the top 10 I Lie. I don't want to tell you the truth. Oh, so I lie. 24 of her singles made it to number one on the country charts, and she's had 45 million singles sold. She's so sorry she, sh she couldn't be here tonight. She's a little under the weather. Over the years, Lynn suffered from various health concerns, including pneumonia on multiple occasions and a broken arm after a fall at home. In 2010, Lynn missed a tribute to her from other women of country music due to undergoing knee surgery. In May 2017, Lynn had a stroke at her home in Hurricane Mills, Tennessee. She was taken to a Nashville hospital and subsequently had to cancel all of her upcoming tour dates. The release of her album Wouldn't It Be Great was delayed until 2018. On January 1, 2018, Lynn fell and broke her hip. Lynn died in her sleep at her home in Hurricane Mills on October 4, 2022, at the age of 90. That was a brief look at country pioneer Loretta Lynn. We hope you enjoyed the show and will remember Loretta Lynn fondly. What was your favorite Loretta Lynn song? Album? Let us know your thoughts on Loretta Lynn in the comments below and, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel, ring the bell to stay informed. Until next time this is Grace in for Kevin Given saying live long and prosper, may the force be with you, and keep reaching for the stars.
Well, Loretta inspired all kinds of generations of artists. Generations that are now picking up right where she left off. News Channel 5's Chris Davis is joining us live from the Country Music Hall of Fame tonight. And Chris, an unbelievable career being honored respectively by everyone tonight. No question about it, Vicki. We spoke to several artists today who say they didn't just idolize her music. After all, it was incredible. They really appreciated her love, warmth, and especially her friendship. Loretta Lynn. An icon, a legend, a pioneer. All would be fitting titles for country music's Loretta Lynn. As a friend and as someone who knew her very well, we're all devastated by losing Loretta. But her dearest friends don't want you to forget she was a real person, too. She was Loretta Lynn no matter where you saw her. You know, the shows were fun, but the fun times with Loretta was always backstage or sitting on the bus and hearing her tell stories or telling a joke or just laughing. She had a wicked sense of humor. She really and I did. love the fact that Loretta never had a filter when it came to <laughs> saying things. We can't tell you the things that we know. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Kelly Lang idolized Loretta from a young age. There's a picture of me looking up to her as I did many years later as well. And that only grew as she paved the way for other female artists. She is the rock. She is the reason yeah. that any woman singer has any opportunity, including myself. The Oak Ridge Boys first met Loretta in the early 70s. Let the love shine down. Let the love shine down. They, like everyone else, were drawn to her songs. She wrote songs from her heart about herself and uh, laid it all out there, laid it all on the line in her music. And uh, I think that's one of the things people appreciated about her. She was so real. Especially her controversial hit, The Pill. And I remember when that was released and uh, there were stations that were questionable about even playing it, you know, and didn't bother her. She went ahead and wrote whatever she wanted to write. At the time, that was like, what? You know, nobody wanted to, uh, to talk out loud about that, but she was brave. She's a brave woman, and yeah. she took an opportunity to help other people through her bravery. But it was that same raw honesty that made her the perfect companion. Very affectionate. When you were in her presence, she was kissing on you or patting on you the oh, whole yeah. time like a grandmother, you know? Y you were the only one in the room with her. Y you felt like you were the only person that mattered to her even if she had thousands of people screaming her name outside, if she was in conversation with you, that was exactly what she was planning on doing until she was completed. Which is why, of all the titles you could give Loretta Lynn... What a legacy she's left behind musically for us to enjoy forever. Those who knew her best would probably choose friend. When you reach a certain age, you're, you're not surprised by someone's passing, but at the same time, you're never ready and nobody's ready for Loretta to go. Isn't that the truth? Now, both Shepard and Lang tell me if she had not become a world-renowned musician, she could have probably been just as equally of an impressive of a comedian. They say she was hilarious, and it all came to her naturally. Reporting live downtown, Chris Davis, News Channel 5. I would write about my life and what was going on around me right at the time and uh, how I was feeling and how some of the other girls were feeling out there. So I, I tried to write for us all, you know. Right here, please, Loretta. Right here, please. Here we go, guys. Right here in the middle. Okay, hold on. Right in the middle, please. Sorry. Y'all can ignore me. I 
think it's just everyday living. I mean, uh, I had to live my songs to write them, and I think it, I think it's everyday living. I think everybody yes. probably lives the same way. There's a little girl backstage that's going to do the play of Coal Miner's Daughter on, Bro on Broadway. And I think she can sing herself to death. <laughs> you hid from me. She's something else. Born a coal miner's Well, I was born a coal miner's daughter In a cabin on a hill in Butcher Holler Rady Dex, that was one that um, I sang that the, a lot of the disc jockeys banned, you know, because they thought it was going to be really bad. And as they listened to it, they thought, hey, this is not as bad as I thought it was, so it was a big record for me. He's, he's since, since I had that stroke, I don't see good, so I, 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 I can't make out anybody. Country music icon Loretta Lynn died at the age of 90. According to a statement from her family, Lynn passed away peacefully in her sleep early this morning at her home in Hurricane Mills, Tennessee. NBC's Dan Cheneman takes a look at the singer's life and career. One of the most beloved and celebrated American singers, Loretta Lynn, was country music royalty. Her rags to riches story and string of hits starting in the 1960s earned her legions of fans drawn to the music that was the story of her life. On your horn. I had to live my songs to write them, and I think, it, I think it's everyday living. I think everybody yes. probably lives the same way. Well, I was born As Lynn's career progressed, so did her success. She would release more than 60 albums over a career that spanned more than 50 years. Loretta Lynn! In 1972, she became the first woman named Country Music Association Entertainer of the Year. Her life and music attracted even more attention when her 1976 autobiography, Coal Miner's Daughter, was made into an Academy Award winning movie starring Sissy Spacek. It told the story of Lynn's humble beginnings, born and raised in the mining community of Butcher Hollow, Kentucky. She married her husband, Oliver Lynn, when she was just 15. The couple had six children, and despite publicized marital problems, they remained married for almost 50 years, until his death in 1996. Known for her signature sequin gowns and classic country voice, Lynn recorded and toured well into her 80s. Try to write what people are living today. You don't want to let your mind go like, I'm too old to do this, and I'm not. Over the course of her career, she received numerous accolades, including a prestigious Lifetime Achievement Grammy Award and the Presidential Medal of Freedom. But it was her open and heartfelt music, inspired by the life she led, for which Loretta Lynn will be most remembered. Dan Shenneman, NBC News. Such a star, Loretta Lynn's remarkable career produced a staggering 51 top 10 hits and he hit it well she always sang from the heart like you connected with her feel stories it. yeah feel it. she just was real she was a bad you know what yeah. <laughs> That's That's right. Right. some of her lyrics i mean back in yeah. the day considered pretty you know controversial and if you have not seen the movie coal miner's daughter well, now is the time to see it because you really it. get a glimpse of, of what her life was like and russ knows her music you were singing you know you, you know Let's see, what's, uh, what's the line? It'll be over my dead body, so get out while you can, because you ain't woman enough to take my man. Oh, oh Russ Mitchell. Love it, she, Russ she, Mitchell. She knew how to say it and hit folks hard. Wow. Thank but you for you're that. You're impressed. <laughs> you I am, I am very impressed. Christy's speechless. Wow. Yeah.
Okay, Russ, thank you for that. <laughs> Let's bring in one of Loretta Lynn's dear friends, country music star in her own Mar Martina McBride. Martina, it was just such a sad moment for all of us to hear about Loretta Lynn's passing. Just tell us how it affected you when you heard the news. Yeah, it was really emotional. I mean, we had gotten to know each other over the years. She inducted me into the Grand Ole Opry and we started a friendship and there's just, there's nobody like her. There never will be anybody like her. For someone like you, Martina, I mean, now we take for granted that women are writing their own songs and in, mm -hmm. in country, there are so many strong, powerful voices such as your own, but Loretta was a trailblazer. Mm -hmm. I mean, the men were writing the songs back then and mm -hmm. she just took her little guitar and wrote her stories and wrote her truth. And that was so mm -hmm. extraordinary. It really was. I mean, she was really the trailblazer when you think about it. You know, she was the first woman to write, as we've said, write her own songs in a time when that just didn't happen. And and she wrote about women. You know, she wrote about she wrote about herself, but in that process wrote about what so many women were going through. And she was really the voice of so many women who didn't have a voice at that time. Yeah, she I mean, she really sang. She was so vulnerable in her words. Once you actually sit and listen to all the words that she sang, there was a real vulnerability in her strength. I picture her being this mentor to you and to all of the women in country music. Was that how she treated uh, treated you and your peers? Exactly. You know, I mean, I think that's will be part of her legacy and the fact that it's kind of our you know, she was like our northern light, like our northern star. You know, she was like always there, always true, always Loretta. And I feel okay. like part of her legacy is us carrying that on and being a mentor and a friend to any new artist coming up, any new, especially female artists coming up. She was always so supportive and so kind and so available to all of us. Mm -hmm. I mean, what an amazing privilege, Martina, to get mm -hmm. to say that Loretta Lynn was your friend. And she's the one who kind of wrapped her arms around you. Mm -hmm. She really did. I mean, she did that for several of uh, the women in country music. Um, you'll hear stories like that. But I don't know. She just was always so, so nice to me. Mm -hmm. And she called me her friend, which always was astonishing to me when mm -hmm. she'd say it. You know, it's <laughs> like you never believe that you're going to grow up and, and, and become friends with your idol and your mentor. So, um, yeah, it was really special, our relationship, and I, I miss her. Well, yeah, we all do. Jenna told us about the spunky side and the whole middle finger story. Did you, uh, <laughs> did you, did you see some of that, that side of her, too? Oh, absolutely. I mean, the thing about Loretta was what you see is what you get. There was not a fake bone in her body. She was always Loretta. She had an opinion. She wasn't afraid to say it. She was hilarious. <laughs> and... Um, just would kind of, she kind of had no filter, you know, which is what was so charming and special about her. Wow. What made the, that voice so powerful. Yeah, it but, sure did. Yeah. Martina, it's so good to see you, by the Thank way. We you, love seeing Martina. you in the morning, too. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. Oh, just to you. love to remember mm -hmm. Loretta and her mm -hmm. singing Coal Miner's Daughter oh. on the Plaza oh. in 1997. That's so iconic, yeah. Al. You were there. And she was just so humble and, and accessible when she was here. Mm -hmm. It's just a special person. Cool. Yeah, really, really cool. cool. All right. Sad news this noon from the entertainment world. Country music legend Loretta Lynn has died. She passed away today at her home in Tennessee. She was 90 years old. Sandy Kenyon joins us now with more on the life and legacy of a pioneering country music icon. Sandy? Joe, indeed it's sad, but what a long and productive life. Loretta Lynn helped define country music in the 20th century and continued writing and recording well into the 21st. Her last record producer put it well when John Carter Cash told the New York Times, with Loretta, you just turn on the mic, stand back, and hold on. When I was born to call daughter. She was a modern woman who broke the mold of the female country singers who came before her. But after Loretta Lynn reached the heights, she never abandoned her Kentucky roots. A member of the Country Music Hall of Fame who got the Medal of Freedom from President Obama. The affection of those who came after her was evident in 2003 at the Kennedy Center Honors. Well, I'm about as old fashioned as I can be, and I hope you're liking what you see. Her biggest hits came in the 1960s and 70s, including. If you're looking at me, you're looking at country. 
It was what I wanted to hear and what I knew other women wanted to hear too, she once said. I didn't write for the men, I wrote for us women. And the men loved it too. And don't come home but drink it with loving on your mind. In 1969, she released her autobiographical Coal Miner's Daughter, which helped Lynn reach her widest audience yet. It became the title of her autobiography and the movie starring Sissy Spacek, who won an Oscar for playing Lynn. You're number 14 nationwide. I she was born Loretta Webb, the second of eight children. I was singing before I was born, she was fond of saying. She and her husband were married nearly half a century before he died in 1996. In 2017, she suffered a stroke that forced her to postpone her live shows. Nevertheless, she worked almost until the end, releasing her 50th album just last year. She had more than 50 top 10 singles on the country chart. But really, her legacy transcended country music to become part of an historical trend towards greater opportunity and freedom for women. I wrote about the heartache, she once said. I wrote about everything. And that, Joe and Lauren, is why her work has stood the test of time. Well, country music singer and songwriter Loretta Lynn has died at the age of 90. Her career spanned decades. Known as a pioneer of the music industry, and one of the genre's first female stars. Loretta Lynn's rags to riches story is well known. A coal miner's daughter who became the queen of country music. She was the second of Clara and Melvin Webb's eight children, born in Butcher Hollow, part of the Appalachia Hill country in Kentucky. Her life during the Great Depression didn't offer many advantages. She grew up without electricity, indoor plumbing, and only completed the eighth grade. As a young teen, she married Oliver Vanetta Lynn, whom she called by the nickname Do or Doolittle. He was 21. A decade later, Loretta Lynn was a mother of four, playing guitar and writing songs at home. With her husband's encouragement, she entered a talent competition and was spotted by a record producer. Her first song, Honky Tonk Girl, was a minor hit, and the Lynn family moved to Nashville. Her marriage had its share of troubles, many of which spilled over into her songs. You ain't woman enough to take my man. Lynn said her husband had problems with alcohol and her long absences on the road. They went on to have a total of six kids, but family life was not always harmonious. Touring took a toll on her health. She battled chronic illnesses and exhaustion. Her best-selling autobiography chronicled her hardships, heartaches, and rise to stardom. I can't sing in front of people. I just can't. Sissy Spacek won an Oscar playing her on the screen. Well, I was born to call. In 2004, Lynn would make a huge comeback, recording the highly acclaimed album Van Leer Rose, produced by Jack White. She would be nominated for five Grammys for the album, winning two, including Best Country Album. Lynn brought a strong female point of view to country music and was seen as a homespun advocate for ordinary women. Well, they say that I'm too country. The way I look and sound. Her career spanned half a century, generating dozens of number one songs. From humble beginnings to country music royalty, Lynn never dreamed of being such a success. I don't think it, you can dream for success because I think it's more or less you have to work for it. Her hard work paid off with a lifetime of awards, including the Presidential Medal of Freedom in 2013. And as for inspiring future performers, she said they needed to be one of three things. Great, different, or first. And I just happened to be different because I started writing my own songs and didn't really realize that the things that I was writing about, nobody wanted to talk about them. They were just doing them, you know? She was born in April 1932. Growing up in a cabin with seven brothers and sisters, she was surrounded by music as a child. She married Oliver Doolittle Lynn at the age of 13. Do, as she called him, was a 21-year-old war veteran. They moved to Washington State and had four kids by the time Loretta turned 18. In all, she would have six children. She was a housewife and a mother for 15 years before making a name for herself in country music. 
Lynn was self-taught and pulled from her life experiences in her songwriting. And don't come home but drink it with on your mind. She started singing in nightclubs out west, made herself a fringe cowgirl outfit, and Dew drove her from radio station to radio station to promote her songs. It was 1960 before Lynn and her family made the move to Nashville and made her Grand Ole Opry debut. You say you're gonna take it, oh, but I don't think you can, cause you ain't woman enough to take my man. And from there, the hits kept coming. 51 top 10 hits in her storied career. There's too much love, Mississippi heart. Too much love, she teamed up with Conway Twitty for some very memorable duets in the 1970s through the early 80s. Lynn was the first woman to win the CMA Award for Entertainer of the Year in 1972 and would go on to become one of the most awarded musicians of all time. CMA Awards, Grammys, a Country Music Hall of Fame induction, a Kennedy Center honor, and the Presidential Medal of Freedom 1976. Well, a long thing to change way back then. Coal Miner's Daughter was made into a movie starring Sissy Spacek in 1980. Except the memories of the coal miner's daughter. Lynn would go on to renew her career many times throughout the decades, including the early 2000s. Oh. <laughs> That's when she teamed up with rocker Jack White for the critically acclaimed album, Van Leer Rose. What else can I say? I want to thank you all very much for this, for this star. And in 2016, Lynn released her first solo album in more than 10 years, called Full Circle. Lynn was always on the cutting edge of country music, openly talking about taboo topics in her songs, including sex, divorce, or alcohol. So but she always stayed true to her. Everyone, and welcome back to Country Cast. Loretta Lynn's daughter, Peggy Lynn, turned to social media shortly after her mother's passing and shared a very personal and heartfelt tribute about her mother and also revealed that Loretta was ready to go to heaven and knew that she was being called home. Peggy wrote, Today I kissed my precious mom goodbye. She looked so peaceful like a sleeping angel. She is beautiful. Even in death, she has just this amazing radiance that is so unique and timeless. I could barely tear my arms from around her. I didn't want her to leave us. I felt possessive and selfish and broken, utterly broken. I have taken care of her daily for the last five years overseeing her health care. It has been the most important and honorable task I have ever undertaken. I promised my family I would take care of her. I would keep her home with us and I would do my best to keep her with us for as long as possible. I tried my very best, my damn best to keep that promise. I'm a pretty private person when it comes to my mom, my family. Our lives have been shared so much with so many all my life. I just like to keep a little something back just for me, personally. I don't post a bunch of selfies with mom and share stories about some of our adventures we have shared over the years because she has shared so much. She has given everything to her fans and friends. I never felt the need to expose or advertise our relationship. I needed to keep something back just for me. Mom, over these last few years after her stroke, so missed her fans, her music, her friends, singing and performing. She missed her tour bus, her dresses, and most of all, her connection to her audience. She spoke about going back on tour again and singing all the time. She would sing all the time at home. She would scare the caregivers to death when, in the middle of the night, break out in song at the top of her lungs. She was and will always be Loretta Lynn. I guess she needed to remind them she had chops. I know I am in shock and grief and just feel like a little girl who misses the arms of her mommy. I am thankful for she left this world gently through in the night. Daddy just came and took her hand and they are together in each other's arms, I know. It was so surreal because yesterday, Mom was talking and very animated, telling us, I am ready to go to heaven. Dew is coming to take me home. 
They told me I'm really going home. She really said that yesterday. She knew. She just knew and was happy. She said she was going to be with daddy. I thought, yeah, one day, and told her, hey, not today, Margaret. I am spending the night with you tomorrow night, so hold up. She said, you better get here, because I am going home. Thank you, Mom, for everything. You have been the best mom. You have been an inspiration to so many. And an inspiration she truly was. Loretta Lynn will remain in the hearts of country music fans forever and will always be one of the most respected and honest souls who have ever stepped foot in this business. And Loretta, we thank you for all of the years and all of the music and everything that you have given us and taught us. Our hearts and prayers continue to go out to Loretta's family and friends during this time. Guys, thank you for tuning in to Country Cast. That will be all for today's video. I want to say hello to everybody, and I love you all, and thank you all for coming. And um, I wish I could get out there and dance with all of you, but you know what? I love all of you, and I want to thank you for coming. And next time, maybe we can get back down here together. Yes. Trey and uh, Taylor is doing a good job here. Taylor's my little girl. I'll raise this girl. She's mine. <laughs> Ernie thinks he's, she's his, but she ain't. <laughs> I love you, Taylor. I love you too, Mimo. Thank you. I'm Carly Pierce. I grew up in Kentucky like the great Loretta Lynn. My Mamaw Pierce and I love to listen to Loretta's songs together. I think Mamaw loved Loretta so much because she too was a coal miner's daughter. I never met Loretta. Always wished I would have. But I wrote this song in tribute to her because I so admire everything about her, especially the way that she wrote about her life unapologetically. Loretta, this is for you.
Entertainer of the year is Loretta Lynn. I like to say that I've won a lot of awards, and this is one that I have been nominated for, but I never did get. And this, I think, is the only one that I haven't gotten. The only thing, I'm real happy, but the only thing that I'm kind of sad about is my husband is gone hunting. He couldn't make it back in to share my happiness with me.
a country mile to find her a good old slow talking country boy. I said, A country boy, hey, I'm about as old fashioned as I can be, and I hope you're liking what you see. Cause if you're looking at me, you're looking at country. You don't see no city when you look at me, cause the country's all I am. Your plans, but does a barnyard shovel fit your hands? If your eyes are on me, you're looking at country. If you were looking. 